Configuration refers to the level of organic structure, including both how the atoms are connected and three-dimensional information about where the atoms are located in space. And naively, this sounds a lot like conformation. Conformations differ in the positions of atoms in space. The difference between configuration and conformation is that conformations are associated with low energy barriers to their inner conversion. These are things like bond rotations and the cyclohexane chair flip, where our energy barriers are fairly small so that inner conversion between conformers is relatively easy at normal temperatures that we find organic substances and organic reactions. Configuration is different. The energy barrier to inner conversion between configurations is off the charts on this scale. Because generally, to interconvert between different configurations, what we need to do is break and reform bonds. And the barrier to doing this is naturally extremely high. Recall the levels of organic structure that we discussed in an earlier video, the three C's. Each of these is associated with a type of isomerism. The top level is constitution or connectivity, how the atoms are connected, and this is associated with constitutional isomerism. The next level is configuration, and the level below that is conformation. And configuration includes both how the atoms are connected and the spatial positions of the atoms within the molecule in three-dimensional space. Molecules with the same connectivity but different positions of the atoms in space, in other words, different configurations, are referred to as configurational isomers or stereoisomers. Stereoisomers differ in the positions of their atoms in space, and importantly, they can't be interconverted through an easy process like a single bond rotation. In this case, for example, in order to convert the compound on the left to the compound on the right, we would have to break the carbon-bromine bond, break the carbon-hydrogen bond, and then put the hydrogen and bromine back in place so that the hydrogen is in front and the bromine is in the back. Under the vast majority of circumstances, stereoisomers do not interconvert. So we can see from the way these molecules are drawn that they differ in configuration. But what exactly does this mean? How do we name the difference in configuration and how do we think about it? Well, the first thing to notice is that where the molecules differ is at this carbon here and this carbon in the corresponding structure. They differ in the way groups are arranged around this central carbon atom. The configurational information that allows us to distinguish between these two molecules is really centered at this carbon. And this is one of two situations where we really need to think carefully about configurational information. In this tetrahedral case, the atom that's really the center of conf the configurational information is this tetrahedral carbon that bears four different groups, such that interchanging two of the groups leads to a different molecule, leads to a stereoisomer. This special carbon is known as a stereocenter, and we'll have more to say about stereocenters in a future video. And although we won't discuss this in detail yet, it's worth asking the question now, how do we name the different configurations in these two molecules? One way to do it would be to specify some kind of coordinate system by convention and actually express in numerical form the positions of, say, the nitrogen, carbon, H, and carboxylic acid groups within each molecule to distinguish between them, but that's complicated. The system we've developed, which relies on some conventions, is simpler to apply but does rely on some standard orientations. More on that in a later video. The second case on this slide involves trigonal planar carbons associated with alkenes, carbon-carbon double bonds. These two molecules are different. They're stereoisomers. The positions of their atoms in space differ, and it's not easy to interconvert between them, since exchanging the positions of the CH3 and the H, we can see that this is really where the molecules differ, would involve breaking the carbon-carbon pi bond. This is a type of isomerism we've seen before, cis-trans isomerism just in an alkene rather than a ring context. And whether the groups bound to the alkene carbons are cis or trans is useful configurational information. Notice here that the term cis and trans are one way to name the configurations, but we're going to develop a somewhat more formal system for naming configurations at alkenes that doesn't depend on the presence of hydrogens within the molecule. As in the case above, the starred carbons within these alkenes are stereocenters because exchanging the positions of two groups at the stereocenter produces a stereoisomer. 